we're both raised Catholic. Um, and so I think that's how it, it started. And then um, not long um, into their marriage, then started attending um, Northwest Church, which is Northwest Fresno. Um, and then, um, so really I, all my life, um, I remember being, uh, being in church. Yeah. Uh, so did you you like it as a kid? Did you like going to the different events or were you kind of always kind of? No, Um, no, I, I did. What I didn't like was um, I didn't like, I was pretty shy as a kid. Um, Didn't really, um, I'm still pretty reserved, I would say. Um, but I didn't like going to new groups. I didn't like going to classes. So um, I remember a lot of times just asking my parents if I could stay with them in the yeah. big church, as, as we called it. Yeah. Um, and so um, it was hard for me. And um, it wasn't the church that I didn't like. It was just being in a new group of people. And uh, what was I going to be asked to do? What, who was going to be there? And it would change from week to week. So, um, so I didn't really, I don't think enjoy going until probably I was in, uh, I don't know, maybe even high school, uh, and into a good youth group. And, and so I was more comfortable doing that. Plus by that time I started serving. Um, so when I was in high school, I was teaching the preschool Sunday yeah. school classes, um, because I, I really just enjoyed that. So, so yeah, that's so, kind of my church experience, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's no, interesting. Um, so did you, did you kind of have a, a moment or a time where you feel like you became a Christian? Did, yeah, I, um, I have a specific memory from when I was seven, okay. um, actually attending a vacation Bible school. Uh, and I think, I don't know if we were at Woodward Park, but I remember being at a park, uh, and, and, you know, having that invitation being given and making that decision at that point. Uh, and then I was baptized when I was in, um, I think in a freshman or sophomore year of high school. Um, so yeah, I do clearly remember that point, um, of making that decision. It amazes me that a lot of people I talk to have these young, I think somebody said four years old. I mean, they okay. remember it. Um, uh-huh. It's just kind of interesting to mm-hmm. me. I don't, I don't have that young. I was raised in the church and I just kind of was a Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had like four years of rebellion. And then I had a huge moment of becoming a Christian. But okay. I don't remember the younger, younger specific time of that happening. Um, hmm. It's always, it's always interesting to hear. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I just have that. I can see that in my mind. Yeah. Um, so, and I think that was more enjoyable for me because I remember I had a leader that I really connected with me and I connected with. And so um, I think, in fact, she was my babysitter after that for a time um, just because we connected so well. And it was pretty difficult for me to, you know, feel comfortable around um you know, other people as beside my, my family. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you remember what, what were you into reading when you were younger? Did, was it, did you ever, was it always church stuff or when you were younger, did you get lost in the books back yes. then as well? Yes. No, I loved, I, I've loved reading ever since I can remember. I, I don't remember. I mean, when I was a kid, I was always reading. I know that um, when I got into junior high and high school, I enjoyed um, like mystery in that genre. Um, and so that was something that I, uh, you know, enjoyed reading, but I don't, um, I just like to read. So yes, I always had a book with me or uh, my nose in a book. Um, so that was something I've always loved. <laughs> You remember getting your, um, like, not maybe not your first Bible, but do you ever remember like an early memory of going to the Christian bookstore or somewhere, or getting getting a Bible for the first time? I don't know where it came from, but I still have it. Actually, oh, really? my first my first Bible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't I don't remember. Yeah, where I got it or who gave it to me. It might even say on the inside. I should look, but I I, I do still have. It had like, um, it has like a drawing almost in watercolor on the front with Jesus holding okay. a child or with children around or something like that. But yeah. 
I can't remember where it came from. Uh, so. <laughs> did you, um, when, when did you kind of, kind of get into studying the Bible, like in a serious way? That came really probably around, I don't know, 2000, in 2012, I have this sort of, well, between 2010, 2012, um, was really, um, kind of some hard years, um, for me after my, um, my third child was born, my son. And so, um, I remember, um, in 2012, I actually participated the first time that I remember, um, our church was encouraging us to do prayer and fasting during Lent. Okay. And so I, um, I did that, um, and really just had, um, a lot of things that God was speaking to me during that time, um, which was good because I had had, um, my previous, you know, year and a half, two years before that, um, I wouldn't say I didn't believe in God, but I was just, um, very discouraged and unsure about, um, you know, God speaking to me or God hearing me, my prayer specifically. Um, and so during that Lent season, that's a real marker for me, um, that 2012, um, he spoke a lot of different things to me and kind of started me on this journey of, um, back to writing. I'd always, as a kid, I liked reading and I liked to write. Um, but once I got to college and then, um, had kids and things like that, that time that I had to write, um, really wasn't there. And so, um, in, in that time period, there was a lot of, um, I did a lot of time, a lot, spent a lot of time praying and, um, actually started a blog, um, out of that season. Um, I don't, you write in it anymore, but that was kind of a popular thing to do at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I think now podcasts are popular, but at that point, blogging was popular. And so, um, I started a blog and, um, just really began to see as I, um, told my story and talked about the different things and kind of how faith and life really intersected, um, that, and I spent more time just in personal devotion, I think after that. Um, and then it was, I started leading um, Bible study um, in, I think it was uh, 2014, so a couple of years later, um, and then it wasn't long after that that I just felt God asking me to write my own study. Um, and so I think that's probably when it began that deeper searching, um, yeah. and studying the word. Um, and it was interesting because I, um, I had this sort of new experience with the verse that says to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. Um, and I'd always been pretty, um, pretty heady. Like that's just sort of, yeah. um, where I would always go. And I didn't really think that, um, using my mind was a way that I could love God, mm. um, until that point okay. when I started digging deeper into, um, his word and reading just, um, you know, commentaries and studying, um, the original language and all of those kinds of things really showed me a different love for God than I'd ever had before. Um, and it was then not long after that, that, that verse kind of, I don't remember if someone said it to me or if I just read it and I thought, oh, okay, so that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm just using my mind to kind of give me this greater love uh, for God. So that was, I did my first study and then I did three studies in a row that I wrote um, and then kind of took a break from, from that in terms of the writing, but still teaching and um, so, but I think that was probably when um, studying the Bible in a new way came was probably 2014 or so. So about six years ago, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And you talked a little, you hit on this a little bit, but I, I mm -hmm. um, ask you a little more of yeah. what, what that, when you're studying, mm -hmm. is there a specific, is it always changing or what's a specific way that you study? I, I remember having that big old concordance. 
Um, huh? I'd carry, I had a backpack, I'd carry my Bibles and my a hymnal and my concordance was just ginormous. Um, yes. And I would, you know, spend time looking up each word and, and doing the Hebrew and the Greek and all mm -hmm. that. What, what's yeah. the kind of, what did it kind of look like for you through those first studies, maybe even? Yeah, I think something similar to that. I, um, I spend a lot of time just reading over the passages um, and making note of things that just stood out to me. Um, I like reading different translations and seeing how those are phrased and, um, what really, um, you know, the different nuances and of that. And I like doing word studies, uh, looking at specific words and seeing, okay, what, what do these mean? Because the, the English language is not, um, as um, nuanced, I guess you would say, as the, you know, Hebrew and Greek languages. I've never studied them formally, yeah. but when you just look up the words and you look at, um, you know, I have different, um, Bible study tools that I use um, to just see that um, it's not just a single word that we're talking about. This is yeah. really more of a more of a thought or a you know a a concept rather than just meaning one word. Um, so I do a lot of that, and obviously just praying over um, you know what I'm reading and during my study time, and um, and then yeah, try to put it into word and. I think, and I mentioned earlier, when I'm reading, um, especially as pre I'm preparing to teach or to write, I, um, I think of questions mm -hmm. that I would ask about this passage or questions that would be good for discussion. Um, and so even in my personal devotion time, um, I use my journal and write down prayers and thoughts. And I always probably at least... I don't know if it's every day, but probably at least four days a week, I'll have there be questions that I write as I'm as I'm studying. Um, so I'm trying to think of, you know, who would be presented to and what kind of questions would help someone dig a little deeper into the text. So, yeah, I, I am a huge fan of questions. I love questions. Okay. <laughs> well, you you do a podcast with interviewing people, it's so true. you know. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> it's true, no, but I I have a bad habit. I guess I, it's just what, the way your brain works. Um, somebody will ask me. I can't even. I'm trying to think of an example. Somebody will ask me a simple question, and I cannot give a single uh, a simple yes or a no. Oh, we were driving by. Um, where were we coming? Oh, we went to Tulare Outlets yesterday with, uh -huh. uh, with one of a uh, couple of daughters, and on the way back we drove by like a, the Palm Reader place. Uh, oh, uh huh. And um, my girlfriend Miss K asked me, "Do you believe in Palm Readers?" Mm. And I, I guess I should have just stopped and understood what she was asking me. But I went into this long like, "Well, what do you mean by Palm Reader? Do you mean like <laughs> as?" It's annoying for the people in my life. <laughs> um, They're like, stop asking you questions. Just, yes or no. Um, I, I have to constantly remind, um, well, myself and my kids that just because I'm asking questions doesn't mean I don't agree or that I think you're yes. not, you know, not right. I just need more information. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I do like to um, ask questions. And I, I think I want to get... My goal is always to get other people thinking. Yeah. Um, I don't want to just give um, an answer. I have a, a, I had a professor in college who became a good friend, actually ended up marrying uh, my husband and I. Um, and he said that um, the best teacher asks questions. So it's something that definitely has stuck with me um, from him and him as a teacher um, to get other people thinking about what we're studying. Not just, I don't want to just tell somebody the answer. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, a lot of times people don't even realize that they don't, they don't really know why they believe something. They, they just have this answer that they've always had. And, and that question can sometimes be a little irritant of, oh, I never thought of it. Like, let me, let me flesh that out or whatever. Um, right. But it's, yeah. it's a good tool for sure. Um, yeah. 